Howdy, AP Freakout. It is Miss Kosh. Um, this is a topic that I have already taught this year, and I teach it a little differently, but I know some of you are following along with Mr. Passwater's notes, and so I thought I would kind of talk through it in case you have access to these notes, and that might be beneficial. Um, to begin with, I, I teach this a little differently. I have my kids... Um, I was realizing this year I've made a thousand kids or more do this activity, and I've never done it myself. Um, but what I would do is instead of coming up with values to plug into my um, to my table, I would have them get pieces of spaghetti, and we would measure. So for sign, we want the the y value, and so I would have them break off a piece of uncooked spaghetti this big and come down here at pi over six and put it on the table. Okay, these aren't in scale with each other, but but that's that's what I would have them do. Well, because this is one here, which is bigger than one on the graph, but whatever. Um, okay, so sine of what I, and also um, I would have included sine of zero is zero. So right here at zero, we have a y value of zero. So we've got this point. Um, sine of pi over two is one. Sine of pi is zero. Sine of three pi over two down here. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Um, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and sine of 2 pi is 0. So we end up getting, we come up to here, we come back to there, we come down to here at negative 1, we come back to here at 2 pi. And this is one period of that um, curve. If we had plotted all of our points, which I didn't, <laughs> um, we'll see that this is concave down and that this is concave up. So I really enjoy doing this activity without, I don't, I don't, to be honest with you, I mean, okay, this is one half. Oh, did I plot that correctly? Oh, no, ha <laughs> Okay, and I did get it right over here. Well, that's great. And this would be negative one half, and this is, you know, right there. So we could plot, plot more of these points, and some aren't gross, but I don't really care what root three over two is approximately equal to. So there we go. Um, Anyway, and I like to see I like to see the correlation between the the y values here become y values here, and, and we we put in spaghetti sticks. Okay, um, but there's our curve, and we could plot all these points if we wanted to. I just don't find it all that edifying. <laughs> okay, um, so what do we take away from this? Well, we have a midline. It goes through the center of our of our function here. Um, it's the midline is y equals zero for the parent function. The amplitude is how high do we go above or likewise below the midline, and the amplitude will always be positive. Um, the period is how long does it take it to do everything it's going to do. Another way to think about it is if I picked this up and shifted it over, how much do I need to shift it, or what's the smallest amount that I can shift it where it matches exactly on top of itself? Does that make sense? Um, like if I were to, let me clear out my calculator for a second. Um, Okay, if I were just to graph sine of x, you can't see that, but here we go. Um, I'm going to come here, um, window, oh, no, I'm not, apparently. Okay, let's try that again. Sine of x, enter. Now I can look at my window. Shift, window. I'm going to go to the trig, and this is like negative 3 pi to positive 3 pi. Okay, so it's going to graph something like this. Do, 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 do. Okay, isn't that lovely? Um, if I come then and say on my... Um, if I took my graph and said sine of x and I wanted to shift it to the left, say pi, it doesn't match up. Do -do 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 -do. They're, they're off by, by pi. So I picked this one up and I shifted it over here and then it started went like this. So this first one that was blue right here then became this one when I shifted it to the right pi. But if I come back and say, well, let's shift it, oh, exit. Let's shift it to the right two pi. It gives us the same curve. So what it did is it took this first one right here and shifted it doo -doo -doo to here. And so, but since it's periodic, they matched up exactly. And that's um, what we're talking about with the period. Now the frequency is my understanding is the frequency is one over the period. So the frequency is, is one over two pi. I've seen some different things and we've had some arguments at lunch. I mean, arguments slash discussion slash this is kind of fun. But anyway, this is what my understanding is for AP. The, the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. Um, okay, the graph oscillates between concave down, here's concave down, and concave up. And sometimes my kids would draw them like this, I mean, not like that, but like they would, they would plot those points, and then they would kind of connect them in a way that was too linear, and that's terrible, and I would take off points. Um, 
Notice with my kids, if you're watching this video, I always want to see that you have a quick, correctly placed one, two, three, four, five points. Okay, and so those are the five things that I'm looking to see that you have labeled. I want to, I want to be able to, you can either do tick marks um, or you can do ordered pairs. I don't care. I just need to know that I can clearly tell that you know what the coordinates are for those five points on a sine curve. Okay. We can also do cosine. And so what I would do with my kids is I would take, we would take a piece of spaghetti and we would measure out the X value and then we would come and move it here. Okay, they're not to the same scale, but here we go. Um, so on this one, notice that at cosine of zero is, it has a length, the, the X value is one. So we're here. And then at cosine of, okay, let's actually pay attention to what they're doing. There's one that was one half and that's at pi over three is one half. And then at, at um, pi over two, it's zero. And then at pi, two pi over three was negative one half. At pi, we're at negative one. I could plot more, but I just, I'm not, anyway, my kids practiced this using spaghetti or discovered this using spaghetti. At pi over three, we were at zero, um, and then we get back to positive one. So we're doing something like, well, and this is four pi over three, that was negative one half. Five pi over three is a positive one half. Okay, so let's see if I can graph these. At pi over three, we're at positive one half. Pi over two, we're at zero. Um, pi over, two pi over three, we're at negative one half. Pi, we're at negative one. Two, four pi over three, is that where I am? Yes, here. And then, I'm not used to doing this, can you tell? I'm a little hesitant. Um, okay, basically this part is concave down, this part is concave up, and this part is concave down. And with my kids, what am I looking for when you plot these? I want one, two, three, four, five coordinates clearly labeled. Okay, just like, um, and actually, with the sine and the cosine, if you picked points like this, on a, uh, if they made this shape but it was cosine versus making this shape and it's sine, I don't know if I said that properly. I don't care. I just want, I want maximum, midpoint, maximum, midpoint, maximum. I want five in a row. So you could do from the top to the bottom, back to the top, or you could go from the midline and work your way here and get another one over here. Anyway, something like that. Okay, same idea here with this. We have a midline of zero, we have an amplitude of one, we have a period of two pi, um, and we have a frequency of one over two pi, and it goes from concave down and concave up. So here's the concave down, here's the concave up, here's the concave down. And those are the parent functions of sine and cosine. Okay, let's see. He, then he says, sinusoidal function is any function that involves addition and multiplicative transformations of this. Okay, of, of f of theta equals sine of theta. The sine and cosine functions are both sinusoidal functions because we can, okay, so basically what he's pointing out to you is that we can take this cosine curve and shift it a little bit and it becomes sine. So you can write, um, my kids are good at this point in the year of writing an equation. I give them a graph and they can write it as a sine function or as a cosine function. Um, if you're new to this, you will figure out how to do that as we go. Um, Let's, um, let's save the examples for the next video. So come on back, um, subscribe, keep watching, um, ask me questions. Hopefully I can help you out. Go practice.